The important thing is that I am having a free pre-convention party on June 3rd, so it'll be in the host hotel, 7 to 10, so everyone is welcome. And as Parvez said, my name is Marisa DeFranco. I am an immigration attorney for the last 14 years, which means that I, and I actually represent people across the board. My client base is small businesses, entrepreneurs, family, people who are wanting to bring their families from other countries. And I also work with asylum cases, people who are fleeing persecution in their home countries. I recently had two awesome wins this past year on LGBT. A case from Uganda and a gender asylum case. On the LGBT case, the government is not appealing, so my client is safe. But on the gender asylum case, the government's appealing. So as it sometimes happens, the law is not as uh, open to ideas of women's equality as it perhaps should be. So that's what I do, and I also represent kids in foster care. A little bit of my practice in care and protection. And the main question is. Why am I running for the Senate seat against Scott Brown? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, I am running to put the government back into the hands of the people. And by the people, I am talking about the 90% of people that show up to work every day, and not just work, but one, two more, than maybe two or three jobs, working 40, 50, 60 hours, and I'd like to bring the 40-hour work week back. I mean, that would be one place we could start, right? Because productivity is an all-time high in our country, and companies have revenues. They do have money. They have revenues on the books, but they're not hiring new workers. They're just squeezing the more productivity out of the workers, and at some point, workers are going to break because they, they need good benefits. They need reasonable hours, and they need worker safety. So these people are the 90% of us, not the super wealthy, and they are the ones that are the engine of the economy. Like, no one ever talks about, they, they bash workers and they say, you know, everyone wants a handout, which no one is asking for a handout, we're just asking for decent pay for a hard day's work. And without that 90%, no company would exist, no organization would exist, we wouldn't have a government. They're the people that make up everything we do, because they buy the goods and services that these organizations and companies provide. So without them, the CEO wouldn't be collecting the $10 million salary. And so I'm in this race to change that calculus. And you always hear the number that in the 60s, the top, per the top CEO <clears throat> made 40, 40 times what the average worker made. And today it's 400 times. But no one, like, put that into real figures. I'm one of those rarities. I'm a lawyer who's actually good at math. So, um, <laughs> so, so you have, assuming, um, and Mara, you're probably good at that, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you have a $40,000 a year job, and in the 60s, the CEO would make $1.6 million. I think everybody in this room would agree that that's a pretty good salary, right? Yeah. You, could, you could live pretty nicely on that. All right, so but today, now you're making $16 million if you're at the top of the heap and the person is making 40000 So, $16 million is a very large salary. And you know, maybe we could argue whether that's, whether the person, if they were earning it, like if they were creating 1,000 jobs or 10,000 jobs or whatever area they're in, and they were giving, they were acknowledging the workers' contribution and respecting the workers' rights. And so maybe, maybe you might be earning $16 but they're not, the reverse is true. They're laying off workers, they're cutting benefits, they're squeezing productivity, they're, um, they want to cut OSHA, Republicans want to cut, you know, cut OSHA to the bone, which is already too small to protect worker safety, and they're still getting raises. So, for me, that is unacceptable. And what's also unacceptable to me is that somebody, if you have a job in this economy, and you're working 50 plus or whatever out 40 hours and you're not able to pay your bills that's wrong nobody should have a full-time job and not be able to have a roof over their head and pay their bills and and not just get by that's what everybody i don't want people to just get by i want people to grow and continue to earn their capacity but we are stuck in this um this basically survival of the richest this obnoxious and obscene, I call it obscene because unlike the Supreme Court, I actually know obscenity when I see it. So, um, 
That is not acceptable. And I, I frankly think it's un-American. So that is why I'm in this race. And my grandparents came from Sicily, my paternal grandparents, my great-grandmother came from the north. People always ask me, am I all Italian? They say, depends on who you ask. <laughs> so um, they came here with no education and they lived the American dream. And that's what I practice every day, is helping people live the American dream. And it's, it's getting harder and harder for people to realize that. And whether you're an immigrant or whether you were born here, I'm running to make sure that everybody, all the people, we say liberty and justice for all, and we mouth those words, but do we really mean it? Does the government stand behind it? So I'm here in this race to make sure that everyone has the access and the opportunity to the American dream that my grandparents had. And I also um, looking for equal justice under the law for women. A lot of people run for office and some people always say, well, women are special interests. I'm not going to mention them. Um, we're 51% of the population and quite frankly, we're still way behind the curveball, earning three quarters of what men earn and working just as hard, being 16% of Congress, which has actually gone down for the first time. Mm -hmm. I mean, frankly, that's pathetic. We, we're, oh, other countries are light years ahead of us and we're stuck at 16%. Um, I don't accept that. Fair pay for uh, honest day's work and we're not going to be political footballs anymore and, and to use women's rights as that to me is again obscene. So, um, and rights for LGBT across the board, it's a no-brainer, but um, some people don't get it. And for immigrants, of course. So I'm in this race, and for those of you that know me, and for those who will come to know me, I'm a fighter. I have a backbone, and I won't back down. As a Democrat, uh, I need, think we need to repeat over and over again that we will cede no ground to anybody on economic justice, because we're the party that brought you the 40-hour work week. We're the party that brought you Social Security and Medicare, which they want to take away from us, which we've paid into and we earn when we retire. And we're the party that brought social justice across the board to all the people that didn't have it when our original constitution was put in place. So that's why I'm in this race, and I welcome anybody's support. Thank you. Um, my name is Lloyd Kay. Uh, first, I want to thank you uh, for doing your work on, um, on immigration. Thank you're you. Welcome. Especially the asylum cases. Um, I'm from New Jersey, and there were a couple of very infamous asylum cases that had up <coughs> for So I'm glad I asked you for women, and mm -hmm. it was such a good You're welcome. Um, what can, where, uh, first of all, where, what, what, where do you live? Where, where uh, are I, you from? I live in Middleton and my practice is in Salem. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I really want to know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Could you so, tell us your credentials education, please? <coughs> uh, I graduated from law school. I heard that much, but you didn't say where. Oh, Suffolk. From Suffolk. Law school. In 1996. At the University of Dayton in Ohio. You're a Buckeye. Uh, uh, I'm actually a flyer. <laughs> a, a, a flyer. The UD flyer. No, I mean, no. Oh, from State. State. No, okay, okay, so I was thinking Ohio State. Sorry. <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I, I Are you a Buckeye? Which I've from already got one post. From where? A line. You're a, oh, look at that. All right. One one and I went to Kent State. Okay, <laughs> excellent. No, the state, state them because some <laughs> election.